Calaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. The king almost took a face plant in Kenya on Wednesday. The Express reported Charles seemed to have caught his foot under one of the grass mats during a visit to the War Graves Commission's Carrier Corps Cemetery in Nairobi. Video footage showed him momentarily lose his footing while his wife extending an arm to help him, but he managed to avoid catastrophe and steady himself. The king then carried on walking as if nothing had happened, smoothly putting on his sunglasses and carrying on with the walk. Charles, rarely described as cool, gave a speech at a state banquet held in his honour by Kenyan President William Ruto. Charles, sort of addressing the issue of slavery, said, The wrongdoings of the past are a cause of the greatest sorrow and the deepest regret. He recognised the abhorrent and unjustifiable acts of violence committed against Kenyans in their struggle for statehood, adding, There can be no excuse. It matters greatly to me that I should deepen my own understanding of these wrongs and that I meet some of those whose lives and communities were so grievously affected. None of this can change the past, but by addressing our history with honesty and openness, we can perhaps demonstrate the strength of our friendship today. And in doing so, we can, I hope, continue to build an ever closer bond for the years ahead. CNN reminds us that Kenya has strong ties to the royal family. It's where William proposed to Kate Middleton, and it's of course where Elizabeth visited as a princess, but left as a queen following her father's death in 1952. Royal author Tom Brower suggested this trip is demonstrating how Charles doesn't actually enjoy being the king. Bauer told GB News, King Charles is not a natural diplomat or politician. I think he does struggle because he knows very well, of course, the terrible things that happened during the Mau Mau period. But more Kenyans were murdered by Kenyans, many, many more than by the British. He never liked going to Africa. He was forced to go to Africa shortly before he became king because he neglected the Commonwealth. He liked going to India, but he avoided Africa because he just didn't find it culturally that interesting, whereas he was very interested in the culture of India. And the real truth is, Camilla doesn't like traveling long distances. I think he does find it very difficult now, and it doesn't look as if he's enjoying the job, having waited so long for it. But in the end, the Commonwealth will fall apart unless he works hard at it. Queen Camilla ran out of cash during her shopping trip in Nairobi. The Express tells us the Queen bought jewellery, a blanket, a basket and some cashew butter from a temporary market. Camilla started off by using the cash held by an aide to pay 4,000 Kenyan shillings for the Siskel basket made by Grace Maynard. It's beautiful, the Queen told her. I think I should buy one. But by the time she bought a blanket from another stall, her aide only had enough cash to pay for half. The Express explains that for the rest of the Queen's shopping spree, the aide had to go around stall holders getting their details to pay them later. At one stall run by Shania Dejum, the Queen spotted a jar of cashew butter and said, That's one up on peanut butter. Dejum was told that the Queen would have to pay for it later, but was okay with it, saying, Her Majesty's credit is very good. Palace Intrigue will be right back. Harry and Meghan took the kids trick-or-treating. They were seen in Montecito with a host of other young families. The Mirror reports Archie held his dad's hand with a pumpkin basket in the other ready to collect sweets. Archie appeared to be dressed as a skeleton. Meanwhile, Meghan carried Lily, who was dressed in a billowing pink costume. People tells us Prince Harry has a new gig. Harry has been appointed as a member of the Board of Directors for African Parks Network South Africa. Prince Harry got involved with the non-profit conservation group that manages national parks across the continent in 2016 and became president of the group the following year. It's unclear when his new role came to be, but Harry's bio now reads, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, is a humanitarian, military veteran, mental wellness advocate and environmentalist. His bio page states, The Duke has dedicated his life's work to advancing causes that he is passionate about and that bring about permanent change for people and places. For over two decades, he has taken a deep personal interest in frontline conservation projects across Africa that work to protect the region's natural resources and wildlife for the benefit of local communities. In 2023, after serving six years as president, he was elevated to an officially appointed member of the board of directors, the governing body of the organization. And while reports of a feud between the Sussexes and Beckhams continue to swirl, David Beckham may have a new friend, the King. Multiple outlets report that David has accepted a dinner invitation to speak to King Charles about becoming a celebrity ambassador for a royal charity. The Sun reports Beckham is being wooed in the hope he can sprinkle a little stardust on the Prince's Foundation, which provides skills training to youngsters. It's an open secret that David wants a knighthood one day, 
and many people have questioned why he isn't a sir after all he's done. The king wants to suss out whether he and David can work together and explore potential projects and find out if they share any common ground. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, or your app of choice. And if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button there. It really helps us out. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue. Good times. Thank you.